Welcome to the fourth lecture of the course Linguistics 2 ENG 504. Now let's talk first of all briefly about what we discussed in the last lecture. Um, we talked about the different levels of language like when a person, uh, when a child starts learning language to the adult acquisition of, uh, to the adult level where he has learned or mastered the advanced level of language. Now, we discussed about the basic parts, the basic levels of language or the, or, the, or the basic components of language like the phoneme and morpheme and then <coughs> sentence formation in syntax and then the discourse. We also talked about what phonology talks, phonetics talks about. We talked about morphology. Then uh, we talked about the syntax, how the sentences are formed. And the, finally, the sentences combine to form the larger chunks of uh, language, which are called the discourse. Then we, uh, we, we, we talked about uh, how these levels, they, in, they enjoy their own individual identity, and they are also linked together, they have a kind of hierarchical structure or a kind of hierarchical rela relation with each other and, and they have a link with the lower level as well as the higher level. And finally we uh, discussed some of the branches which have entered the domain of linguistics. So uh, now if we look at the branches when we, if, uh, we, we concluded the last lecture with the mentioning that many new branches have entered the domain or the area of the study of linguistics. Let's briefly look at some of the branches. In today's lecture, we'll be talking about one or uh, the first, uh, the, a few branches uh, briefly and then in detail about psycholinguistics. No, we'll talk about psycholinguistics later in the later part of the lecture. But first of all, look at the what is the core of linguistics. It, the core of linguistics is the study of language structure at different levels. Language is described at different levels individually in linguistics and then of course their relationship is also described in linguistics. No other, because no other field describes language so systematically and completely as linguistics. Systematic and complete and analytical approach is taken to study the different branches, different uh, branches or different areas of linguistics, and the language is divided into different areas, different branches, and different levels. And for each level, linguistics has developed separate set of rules or separate set of uh, principles to study the levels, and also their link with the other ideas. Because language plays part in the, and since language plays part, a part in many areas of human life. We mentioned briefly in the last lecture that um, it has link with humanities, it also has a uh, link with psychology or philosophy, it also has links with humanities, it also has links with science, the empirical methods the, uh, and the social science uh, methods, the um, rational approach and the deductive approach both are applied to collect the data and to uh, arrive at statements uh, to give the uh, final analysis of a certain uh, a certain phenomena. So the, uh, we 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 see that linguistics has developed a link with the other so many areas of human life, so many areas, so many phenomena of human life, social life, of man's internal active thoughts and the human activities. Uh, so it plays a part. Because language plays part, a part in many areas of human life, because man needs language to communicate, man needs language to study the other areas. So that is why we say that language plays a very important part in all the many areas of human life. And the link of linguistics, that has uh, led us to say that link, link of linguistics with many areas has led to growth of many branches and that is the reason that we now have so many branches of linguistics that every day we see that new branches are uh, entering the domain of linguistics because uh, as the areas develop as many branches of knowledge develop man needs language man is using language to uh, to analyze or to to study those 
branches of knowledge and uh, of course to explain different phenomena, different processes in those fields. That is why that we see that linguistics has developed a link with so many other fields of life and uh, so many other branches of linguistics. That is why that may, then now we have so many branches of linguistics. Now, li like other sciences, linguistics has pure aspects. Now we see that some of the aspects are just theoretical. Linguistics talks about theories, the description of uh, different um, processes, different stages in um, uh, the development of language. It also talks about the analysis of different levels of language like we talked about in, uh, in the last lecture we talked about the phonemes, we talked about the different stages of uh, word formation, sentence formation, discourse formation, the semantics giving meanings to the, so like th this is the analysis of different levels so one of the um, one aspect is that linguistics has pure aspects it's just restricted to theories and description but now we see that it also has a practical aspect. We apply this knowledge, the knowledge that we have about the language, we apply it in learning and teaching of languages. Like in many areas like, um, like you have areas like ELT, like um, teaching of English as foreign language or a second language. So these, these, uh, this knowledge is now being applied practically in teaching and learning language, in the correction and improvement of speech orders, speech disorders even. Linguistics has also helped the medical science in correction or improvement of speech. There are uh, instances of speech disorders sometimes in people or uh, children. So linguistics also gives a helping hand there. Linguistics also gives some corrective measures there. And linguistics also appreciates the use of language and when we appreciate language use of language in literature like when we analyze the literary pieces we talk about the use of language we talk about the use of musical elements in poetry we talk about we talk about the rhyming scheme in uh, uh, rhyming scheme in literature uh, literary pieces or when we talk about the repetition of words or the use of certain words and certain sounds in the lit uh, literary pieces there again we see the use of language and we, uh, we, we, we have we developed a link of language with, uh, with literature. So looking at all this, we see that language is not only a theoretical uh, phenomena, language is not only used uh, in, in theoretical aspects, but it also enjoys a practical aspect, the use of language in different fields. Now, what is the use of when we, when we, uh, when we say that language is also practically applied to different fields, in different fields, we call this applied linguistics. Now, what is applied linguistics? It covers practical application of theories, concepts, and analysis provided by linguists. Whatever theories the linguists have given us, whatever new concepts, whatever new ideas the linguists have given us, we take those ideas, we take those theories, concepts, and we apply them practically to different fields of knowledge. We use them practically. We take the uh, principles from there, and we uh, we we analyze the uh, we we can analyze even uh, we can analyze the literary pieces in literature. We can use the, that in the medical sciences by uh, giving uh, support to the by by giving advice to the people with speech disorders. Now all the applications are based on a thorough description of language. Now we can only uh, we can apply the practical we can apply it practically only when we describe it properly. If we know the use of language, we know the role it plays, we know the role of the words, we know the role of the sounds, we know the roles of the uh, the words in a, in a sentence, we know the roles of sentence in a in a discourse. Only then, when we know the, the, the roles they are playing in different orders, when, they, we, when, we talk, when we describe the combinations they have, when we describe the order in which they have to be used, only then we can apply it practically. Unless we describe an individual unit, we cannot use that individual unit to describe a larger piece. So all applications all the practical applications, they are based on a thorough description of languages. Language is first to be described clearly, it has to be described thoroughly to be applied practically. We have the words of 
a speed coder here whether it is speech therapy psychiatry literary criticism translation what all these fields of application have in common is a necessity for descriptions of various languages involved now we have the use we have different fields here given in this code that speech uh, uh, language is being used in speech therapy psychiatry literary criticism or it's being used in translation all the all of them they have one thing in common and that is the necessity of descriptions of various languages involved first we need to describe the languages first we need to take each language and describe it properly the structure of that language in its own cell and its relation with the other languages only then we can use it practically in different fields language we see is related with the inner world of man's mind and to the outer world of society and social relationships now we see the two aspects of language language is related with the inner of a person the mind the thought processes the 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 ideas the feelings the the, the, the whole inner world, man uses language to express himself, man uses language to express himself or herself, man uses language to, to think, man, man uses language to write, man uses language to, uh, to whatever, uh, activ in different activities in interaction with people. Now all that is related with the inner world of man's mind. Whatever occurs in the mind, man needs to express that. For example, a, 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 um, a, a child feels hungry, of course, would ask for food. Or a man needs, for example, uh, writing uh, something to write, he would ask for, the, for a paper and a pen. So something occurred in the mind, the need to write, the need to express the feelings, the need to express the thoughts. So that is why an utterance was, the language was uttered and uh, the uh, paper and pen was asked for or a child asked for food. So that all is related with the inner world of man's mind. And it's also related with the outer world of society and social relationships. Man, of course, is living in a society, has interaction with people in the society. And when there is interaction, man needs to communicate. Man needs to exchange ideas. Man needs to get satisfied. Man needs to get uh, his uh, uh, needs and desires fulfilled. So for that, definitely man needs to communicate so and sometimes uh, a man would be living in different kinds of um, environments and would change the words man would use a different kind of language different kinds of words different kinds of sentences depending on the environment where the man is um, where man is living so it's also related with societies languages have cha they change in different societies there are multicultural societies in multicultural societies, you find different kinds of languages. Like people living from diff uh, people belong who belong to different societies. They live, they come and live together. There, they of course learn some of the uh, gestures or some of the words, the postures, the expressions of the other cultures, and again they start using that. So this is how they are learning more languages, and the language is de um, uh, getting developed. So this means that language is not only your own pers inner phenomena or inner activity but it also is outer uh, outer as uh, outer activity like when you are uh, uh, when you are talking to people when you are living in a society again you are learning languages you are improving your languages you are using words uh, being used in different societies or being used by people of different cultures so uh, each of these aspects there are inner aspects there are outer aspects and each of these as aspects has led us to develop uh, to, to talk about psycholinguistics and sociolinguistics now what are these two fields let's look at psycholinguistics now psycholinguistics is basically relatively a new um, uh, field it was a re it's a recent branch which developed in the 60s and it's basically the study of interrelationship of psychological and linguistic behavior it's a relationship between psychology of a person whatever occurs in the mind of a person and whatever language that person uses or uh, or utter whatever words or, or language uh, that person uses in different 
situations. It's the effect or the impact of the psychology or the inner thoughts or thought process of a person, uh, the effect of that thought process on, um, on the language a person uses.